Thank you for watching today. This is Kinnear. Welcome back to another Starfield New Game Plus video. If you're following the series, in the last video we recruited non-Constellation members for our ship, specifically Eric, Easy, and Omari. In this video, we're headed to Vulture's Roost, a secret ecliptic base all around good time destination. On top of the combat and debauchery, there's so much loot, I'll have to build a spreadsheet to count it all. By the end, we're racking up over a million credits at face value. So let's get started. Starting off in Neon, we'll head to the Jaffa system in planet Jaffa 4. Let's head down to the surface. I arrived when it was dark, and I'd really prefer to start this in the daylight. So we'll do a quick sleep. Worth noting, this planet is not a good planet to sleep on if you're trying to pass time for vendors, evidently. Bet there are some weird creatures around here. Let's head on out. I'll take Betty as my companion this time. Check our guns. I like to go over here and clear off a couple of the ecliptic that might provide support for the first group that we're going to fight. If I can find them. There's one. Good night, sir. I don't know if I'll find any more. There might be one behind those barriers. There he is. Oh, that was a terrible shot on my part. I did get him under sneak attack. So we have another one that's a, awake or alert up there. He might be inside that building. I don't think we're going to be able to get him. Anyway, so we cleared off two on that ground level. That's great. So we can just move ahead. Yeah, bet he's still here. I think there's a couple over here. We'll go ahead and use Sense Star stuff. Got that guy. Got that guy. It's almost not fair. But it is fun. Hello, buddy. I don't think I can get to him. That guy's gone. He's having a bad day. Come on, buddy. There you go. I think there were only three down there, so... We haven't even made it off the landing pad. And we took those guys out and two of their support guys on the next level. It's worth noting that it's... I have to loot these guys completely out here. I've been through here before. If I don't loot them completely, these bodies disappear somewhere along the... the way. I'm not really sure what triggers that, but... There are times where I'll come back, and I don't think I've saved or exited the game, and they're gone. So, might as well loot them. Get everything off the table. Check out the weapon case. That's empty. That one's locked, and we have a safe. Yeah, I'll go ahead and loot these now. I always like getting 40 millimeter ammo. One gun. Worth a bit. 1900 credits. That's nice. All right, I think that's it for here. I have a love-hate relationship with this Sense Star stuff. So many times you can't actually see if they're behind a wall. So sometimes I end up taking shots. I like this shot here. Before I even get off this platform, there's at least one or two guys up there on that edge. Good night. Oh, I think I was high. There's two guys up there. I see them. And they can't reach you with their shots. 
They're just wasting ammunition. That guy, good night. Let's just blow those guys up. I don't know if that'll get them both. It depends on where they're at when they're kind of patrolling that edge, but... No, he's still there. He survived. Well, he... He survived for just a moment longer. Okay, so we've prepped that area. We'll check around the corner here, loot these guys. There's one more there. Hey, buddy. I'm such a terrible shot with this thing. It's all right. Yeah, one of the great things about this, almost this entire base, I think, is you're within range of your ship. And so as you loot, you can just stop and transfer everything back to the ship on a regular basis. So there's no, there's no reason to get overloaded here. And you really don't have to use your companion to carry anything. Loot back here usually isn't great, but I do tend to open everything in this base. Yeah, that was completely underwhelming, so... Worth noting, I bring as many digipix as I can to this base. It's easy. I think you have to spend at least 10 if you're going through here and you get everything done in the first shot. So I double that or more. I think I'm carrying 40 something right now. There's another guy over here. I remember in the distance. We just take care of him. Oh, Betty just shoved me off. Thanks, Betty. Super helpful. Okay, where is this guy? Good night, sweet princess. On our tail. Let's move on upstairs. I probably have all these guys fired up. Missed him on all those shots. <laughs> That's terrible. Got that guy. Look at all the sparkles. It's like 4th of July in the driveway. There's a key upstairs. There's really not any great loot in there anyway. Oops, I forgot. It's those guys. Boom. Loot him up. Yeah, we're going to loot this as we go. Like I said, I, I've uh, played this before where you clear it all out and then you come back through and try to loot it later. There's a lot of loot. There's a lot of loot as we go, and there's some unusual behavior with some enemies despawning after you pass through. So I'm just not going to take any chances. The cell key. I don't think there's everything in here other than some clothes. There's a hat. I like hats. Who didn't like a hat? And again, since we're nearby, let's just get rid of it.
This next area is a lot of fun. It's the bar. I have to admit, I like this first sniper shot. That poor guy, just sitting there, chilling. Taking a break from a hard day being an ecliptic mercenary. Ecliptic commandant. We'll just clear these guys out. They'll be hopping all over the place, it'll take a second. Hi, buddy. I missed him. Got him. You make a nice corpse. Get back here, you coward. That's a big part of the way I do this. I can take out eighty percent of whoever I'm going to face and then clear out the rest with a shorter range rifle. You're gonna wanna rethink this. You might wanna rethink your priorities in life. Is that what she said? I don't know. I think that's it. Bar's empty. Time to put on our loot goblin hat and see what we won. I do like to check that little corner. We'll go down that quarter in a second because that's the path to the next area. But sometimes there's a guy trapped inside one of the buildings or one of the rooms. You clear him out. And our first contraband. Lots of Aurora and celery. Yeah, I've heard that celery goes really well with Aurora. So, like, you're tripping on Aurora and celery just makes it so much... I'm kidding. I don't have any idea why there's celery on the table. Oh, let's go to the dancers' booths. Betty, no! Okay, I like companions because, you know, they just wander around and say things. But, my goodness, the number of times they walk in front of you while you're doing something like that. I don't know why I check these bathrooms. Optimism? I know what it was. It's that one time on Tau Seti when we found wine in the bathroom. So now I always have to check. Let's move everything back to the ship. Always unlock the kitchen. This is one of those situations where you're always guessing, like, should I open this safe in the back of a kitchen? Why would this matter? It probably has a carrot in it, right? Or something like that. But no, this one has five room keys and 1600 credits. This safe is, this safe's unique in this point of interest and it's always worth opening because it has the five room keys. You can open those five rooms on your own, but you spend a bunch of time playing the security mini game and you waste more digipics. So getting the keys is worth it. What's behind door number one? Just a weapon, a little bit of money. Door number two, winner. Or contraband.
There we go. That's a lot of contraband. That's the great thing about this location. By the end of this, I will have racked up over a million credits at face value. And this is an NG plus five game. And I'll go ahead and put a spreadsheet up at the end and give you a breakdown of where the credits come from. But we just crank along through here, killing everything we run into, looting everything we find. And by the end of it, the hull is pretty massive. It may be in the game at this point in time, the most money you can pick up at a single location. Upstairs, three more doors. I thought I only had five keys. Two down, three upstairs. Oh, this, this room's great, lots of loot. I have to unlock a few things, but well worth it. I'd take everything. The Aurora is really not that big of a deal, but you can use it depending on what your skills are set at. You can make some pharmaceuticals or you can just sell them. Wonderful, five and five. That's a big stash. Room number four. Yeah, there's nothing going on in here. Some of these are real zeros. Speaking of... That's okay, we didn't waste a digipick digi on it. And, and I think that's that's the reason you pick up the, the keys in the kitchen. Because it's one thing to pick all those locks and get one room that's full of great loot. It's another thing to spend all your time picking those locks. There's a nice gun. That guy dropped behind the bar. I think this is just about bar tabs. Yeah. Yeah, there's some ecliptic. They've been coming here for a while and they're having a good time. Quick transfer back to the ship. Especially all these contraband items. There's never really much in the rooms that are already open. I don't think there's anything. I mean, if you want a bunch of succulents, there's a bunch of plants, there's a bunch of decorations in here. So that's probably a good point. If you're going to build an outpost, this place is great for collecting a bunch of things that you could put in your outpost. Or if you're going to buy an apartment and you want to furnish your apartment and you need a bunch of knickknacks for the walls, pick them up here. Why not? The rooms off to the side are, I don't want to say hit or miss. They always have the same things in them, I think. This one, if you pick the lock, you can walk right in and pick up a ton of contraband right off the bat, which is great. So pick the lock on the door and you don't have to worry about the crate inside. This next room, you have to pick the lock on the door. And I think there's only one piece of contraband inside. It's a little bit of time, a cheap did you pick. And the contraband's worth, I'm going to guess, it's worth a thousand, two thousand. A little more Aurora and some stolen artwork. Hey, let's take a space rock display. I don't need it. Why did I pick it up? Coffee mugs. I think there's one more room up here that's locked. Yeah, this is nice. Those are all really nice decorative items. Like if I had a, an outpost, that'd be great. Really only open this up if you're trying to loot everything out here, I think. There's not much in it. Grenade, credits, helmet. What are you doing over there, Betty? There's a Vasco part. We don't have Vasco in this game. But Vasco gets around, and there's a part of his chassis. I don't know if the VAS-119 is a unique designation. I, I don't think the other robots in the game have it, so either that's a replacement part for Vasco, or maybe he's less unique than I thought. Let's transfer things to the ship. Why am I still carrying brute force? I never use it.
All right, here's another opportunity to take some guys out before you even get near him. And as soon as we walk out this door, the dagger is inbound. Yeah, there's a case. That guy is underneath the platform and you can't shoot him because he's underneath the platform. That guy's down. Nice XP on him. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to wait till I get over there. See, like I, I thought his foot was maybe exposed or something. Anyway. There's a guy in that building up ahead. Some nice credits here. Can I get a shot on him from here? Betty, no. He's driving me crazy. Bad time to take a seat, buddy. Crouched. Sniper. 4x damage. He's down. This is the platform where we blew up the fuel tanks earlier. I don't even see bodies. Maybe they went over the edge. I don't know. This room's got some good loot. You're not squeamish, are you? Oh, Betty. Why do you ask? What are you going to show me? You know, since our ship's within range, even though those are low value, we'll take them. And since this is pretty much a loot run, we'll open this case too. There's not much in here. A little drink, maybe. I thought we killed a guy up here, too. Maybe his body disappeared. I think it's part of the inconsistencies I've seen. Which is that, like, ecliptic bodies will disappear at different points as you work around Vulture's Roost. Maybe it's the dagger coming in. So at that point in time it clears up some of the bodies that have fallen. I don't know. I do know in previous runs of Vulture's Roost, if I try to go back and loot those first three or four bodies, they're just gone. So grab whatever you can, as far as you can. That guy's still here. I don't really think we have many left. It's the guys on the dagger, maybe one or two that are walking around. Yeah, one of those guys is out on the ground. We'll take care of him. He's not even gonna know this is happening. Ecliptic coming none. Those three guys are inside, and I've got one guy behind me who was underneath the platform. I can't get to those guys in there. He doesn't even notice me. That was a bad mistake. Sparkle time. Is that some kind of magic trick? Is that some kind of magic trick? Betty says. More weapons, more loot. Really not worth the effort, but... Okay, those are our last three guys. 
What shall we use on them? Sometimes I've gone across the other side and just used a sniper rifle, but I don't think that's nearly as interesting as just throwing a bunch of explosive rounds inside the landing bay with them. Let's see how that works out. Hello. Hello. Say hello to my little friend. That was pretty easy. And that's why I'm always buying 40 millimeter rounds because every now and then it's just fun to lob explosives at people. I think there's two guys inside here. Let's take care of them. This guy doesn't even notice we're here. And that's probably bad for him. Phase time. That's complete overkill, literally. There we go. He's not dead. I thought I would get him in the first shot. Oh, he's a common dog. Took a few shots. He's carrying almost 3,000 credits. Pretty good. Oh, I like. Oh, there's some contraband. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you do have to be careful. If Betty walks through enough of those uh, Annihilator rounds, I, I think those are Annihilator rounds. That's the same effect that the Annihilator rounds have, but the Inflictor just has that, I think, by default. I should have checked if this one does. Or Contraband. So if Betty walks through that enough times, I think she can go hostile on you. And then you've got to go through this whole song and dance to, to calm her down. I don't really want any of the rest of this stuff. And, and we're going to take this ship. I just there's want to make sure there's nothing explore. outside. So I'll do a quick... I'll do a quick patrol around out here and make sure there's nothing that I've missed. I did not want phase time. And that's it. The dagger is ours. It's not much of a ship, but uh, I'm not sure we have to register it. We might. We can keep it around. We can sell it for a little bit. But it's here, and we might as well take it. I will note it is buggy as it is a buggy ship. There's something going on with it. There's something about this landing spot that makes the cutscenes. Yeah, watch this. The cutscene on this is weird. That's kind of cool. And then you get stuck in the rocks. Yeah, this is <laughs> it's kind of a pointless cutscene. So there's something buggy about this ship. I don't know what it is. And I think this planet is surrounded by UC and Free Star ships who don't seem to care that there is an ecliptic base on it, which is fine. We can't make it to Wolf. So ideally, I would like to go to Wolf and start selling this contraband. So we're going to go to Perima and swap over to our primary ship. Because we've been to the Red Mile, our favorite place, we can go directly there and have a conversation with ship services. We will not be running the Red Mile today. Frankly, we won't be running the Red Mile again if I can get him, if I can help it. In my original playthrough, I went ahead and ran it 29, 30 times so that I could get the uh, 
<laughs> so I could be the winner, you know? And the reward for it is completely not worth it. <laughs> but your name goes on the board, so if you like that, it's kind of cool. Lon Anderson. He's so miserable. I feel like, man, I should bring him like a prize. One of my ships is unregistered. Maybe I could bring him a gift from another planet. Here, Lon. I just want you to be happy, man. So we'll make the Mitar 4 our home ship. And get out of here. And we should have no problems grab jumping all the way to the den at this point. Wait a minute. <laughs> I just went out to my ship, which should be the Mitar 4. And it looks like we're kind of inside the dagger again, except it's missing half of its outside or its shell. So something's broken. We're going to fast travel back outside onto the ground. Hey, Betty. What's going on? So the dagger's there. So that shouldn't have been the ship we landed in, or we, we fast traveled into. But our ship is here too, the Mitar 4. Interesting. So we're just going to enter this one at ground level and trust that the dagger is in our inventory and we can deal with it later when we get to another system and we want to sell it. So let's take a quick look at the loot we gathered at the Vulture's Roost. That's a lot of contraband. That's awesome. We're going to total that up. Weapons that I have on the Mitar. I've transferred everything to the Mitar 4. That's a wonderful, wonderful collection of weapons. No legendaries. The Radburn was the only one that I had in there before. Spacesuits. We've got some real value there in spacesuits. Not going to use any of these myself. We're just going to vendor them. Packs. A little bit of value here in packs, not a lot. And helmets, a little bit there too. Not going to worry about this, that's all very small. That's a tremendous haul. Let's take a look at the loot that we've collected across all of Vulture's Roost. On the right hand side, you'll see the details category by category. Contraband. 377,550 credits worth of contraband at face value. Keep in mind, this is not what we're going to get when we sell this. Weapons, 630,000 credits worth of weapons. Spacesuits at 97,000, helmets at 21,000, and packs at 29,000. On the top left-hand side, you can see a summary of those five categories. 1,155,000 credits in one trip. Now, I did a calculation below showing my typical selling percentage. I should get 15.9% back, or 183,000 credits should be my net return on that trip. And just from a rough estimate off top, I had I spent about 40 minutes going around, and I really didn't rush through it. I took my time, especially with the sniper approach. You could get through this thing a lot faster. So my earnings per minute on this particular run are around 4,500 credits per minute. That's not bad. Now, I am going to spend a significant amount of time selling all this material and that's going to take some time so that's actually going to make things look a little worse but in the end it's going to be as good as anything we've done anyplace else on the selling side this is one of those cases where it would be a really good idea to have already unlocked the key because the vendors at the key are all too happy to buy contraband as it stands i'm going to have to sell the contraband at the den where i can go in without being scanned or once I get to a relatively small amount of contraband and I have a shielded cargo bay, I could move over to Neon or to one of the other major cities, take my chances that the contraband doesn't get scanned or save scum it, and then land and start selling contraband there as well. But they only have one trade authority and only one vendor that'll buy contraband. So we have to move that. The weapons are not marked stolen. So really all we're going to need to do is hit all the weapons vendors across the board, and that should happen pretty quickly. If I wanted to throw a base down on a planet and just put some storage containers at that base, even sitting out in the open, I could store the contraband and come back later and sell it over time as I was doing other quests. I'm going to do the rest of that off camera. 
Thank you so very much for watching to the end. I really appreciate it. Just a reminder, no amount of regret can change the past and no amount of worrying can change the future. The best preparation for tomorrow is to do your best today. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, tag the subscribe and notification bell. Hope you come back. This is Kinnear. Until next time, I'm out.